Bernie Jr. Six actors play over 50 roles, forming a witty look at the roles and rituals of the American wasp. You can learn a lot about a culture from the way it eats. Such as what? Well, take the finger bowls, for example. Now, there you have an almost neurotic obsession with cleanliness, reflecting the guilt associated with the last stages of capitalism. Great performances, the best in dance, music, and drama, is made possible by a grant from Exxon. Exxon, quality you can count on in the performing arts. Great performances is also made possible by grants from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, this station, and other public television stations. the dining room. Oh, boy. You see how these rooms were designed to catch the early morning light? I'll say. French doors, lovely garden, flowering crab. Do you like gardening? I used to. Imagine. Imagine having a long, leisurely breakfast in here. As far as the instant coffee on Eastern Airlines? Exactly. <laughs> you know, this is a room after my own heart. I grew up in a dining room like this. Same sort of furniture, everything. So did I. Well, then, here we are. Welcome home. What are they asking again? Make an offer. I think they'll come down. You know, you know the trouble is we'll never use this room. Oh, no. Well, we won't. The last two houses we lived in, my wife used the dining room table to sort the laundry. Oh, dear. And I think you better show me something a little more contemporary. That means something farther out. How long have we got to find you a home? One day. And how long will the corporation keep you here after you found it? Six months to a year. Oh, then definitely we should look farther out. You can see the kitchen as we leave. Well, you shouldn't have shown me this first. I thought it was something to go by. Well, you spoiled everything else. Oh, no. We'll find you something. But wasn't it a lovely room? Let's go, or I'll buy it. The dining room. Yes. You notice how we both gravitate right to this room? I know it. You're sure Mother doesn't want any of this in Florida? She hardly has room for what she's got. She wants us to take turns without fighting. We'll just have to draw lots, then. Unless one of us wants something and one of us doesn't. We have to do it today. You think that's enough time to divide up a whole house? I've got to get back, Sal. Look, we'll draw lots, and then we'll go through the rooms taking turns. Here. We'll use this salt spoon. Take your pick. If you get the spoon, you get the dining room. You mean you want to start here? Well, we've got to start someplace. You mean you want the dining room? Yeah. If you win, where will you put it? That's my problem, Sal. I thought you had a tiny apartment. Come on, Sal, choose. You don't want it. Of course I want it. I mean, you've already got a perfectly good dining room. Not as good as this. I don't want to fight. Now, which hand? Good morning, Annie. I know what will happen if you win. What? You'll end up selling it. Selling it? That's what will happen. It will kick around for a while, and you'll end up calling a furniture dealer. Sally, I am absolutely amazed that you would say that. I don't want to fight. Neither do I. Maybe we should defer the dining room. Maybe we should. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Annie. Selling the dining room. Is that what you told Mother I would do? I told her I'd give you the piano if I could have the dining room. Oh, Annie. Yes, sir? Did I find a seed in my orange juice yesterday morning? I strained it, sir. Yes, I'm sure you did, Annie. Nonetheless, I think I may have detected a small seed. I'll strain it twice, sir. Seeds can wreak havoc with the digestion, Annie. Yes, sir. They can take root and grow. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Daddy? Yes, good morning, Lizzie Boo. Charlie and me come out and sit. Charlie and I. Charlie 
and I can come out and sit with you while you have breakfast. Certainly you may, Lizzie Kids. I should be delighted to have the pleasure of your company, provided... Yippee! I said, provided that you sit quietly without leaning back in your chairs and don't fight or argue. He says he can! I said you may, sweetheart. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. Here's your cream, sir. Thank you, Annie. You're welcome, sir. Dad? Hmm? When do we get to have fresh cream on our shredded wheat? When you grow up, that's when. I'll tell you one thing. If there's a war, nobody gets cream. If there's a war, we'll all have to settle for top of the bottle. Mother said she was thinking about having us eat dinner in here with you every night. Yes, your mother and I have both been thinking about that, and we're both looking forward to it. As soon as you children learn to sit up straight, I see no reason why we shouldn't enjoy a pleasant meal together every evening. Could we try tonight, Dad? Could you give us a test? Uh, no, Charlie, not tonight, because tonight we're having a small dinner party. But I very much hope that you and Liz will come downstairs and shake hands. I get so shy, Dad. Well, you'll just have to learn, sweetie pie. Half of life is learning how to meet people. What's the other half, Dad? Was that a crack? No, Dad. That was a crack, wasn't it? No, Dad, really. That sounded very much like a smart guy wise crack to me. People who make cracks like that don't normally eat in dining rooms. Your car's here, Lizzie, for school. Okay. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Annie. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, sweetheart. Now sit quietly in the car, say good morning nicely to the driver, work hard, and don't be late. Huh? Huh? Dad, could I look at the funnies? Certainly. Certainly, you may. This won't mean much to you, but the government is systematically ruining this country. Miss Kelly told us about the government. Oh, really? And who is Miss Kelly, pray tell? She's my teacher, Dad. I don't remember any Miss Kelly. She's new, Dad. I see. And what has she been telling you? She says there's a depression going on. I see. People all over the country are standing in line for bread. I see. And so the government has to step in and do something. You tell Miss Kelly she's wrong. Why? I'll tell you exactly why. If the government keeps on handing out money, no one will want to work. And if no one wants to work, then there won't be anyone around to support such things as private schools. And if no one is supporting private schools, then Miss Kelly will be standing on the bread lines along with everyone else. Now you tell Miss Kelly that, if you please. Dad, could we leave a little earlier today? We'll leave when we always leave. But I'm always late, Dad. Nonsense. I am, Dad. Yesterday I had to walk into assembly when they were still singing the hymn. A minute or two late. Everyone looked at me, Dad. Well, you just tell everyone to concentrate on that hymn. Sometimes I walk in when they're already doing arithmetic. Miss Kelly says I should learn to be punctual. Miss Kelly again, eh? She says that if everybody's late, nobody would learn any mathematics. Now you listen to me, Charlie. Miss Kelly does not teach us politics, nor does she teach us how to run our lives. She is not going to tell you or me to leave in the middle of a pleasant breakfast and get caught in the bulk of the morning traffic just so that you can be on time for some silly hymn. Now, long after you have forgotten that hymn, long after you have forgotten how to factor, long after you have forgotten Miss Kelly, you will remember these pleasant breakfasts around this dining room table. And here is your mother to prove it. Good morning, dear. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. I know people who leap to their feet when a beautiful woman enters the room. Oh, dear, that's all right. I also know people to rush to push in their mother's chair. Thank you, dear. And finally, I know people who are quick to give their mother the second section of the morning paper. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. Now, Charlie, take a moment, if you would, to look at your lovely mother bathed in the morning sunlight and reflected in the dining room table. Oh, Russell. Look at her, Charlie, and then ask yourself carefully, which is worth our ultimate attention, your mother or Miss Kelly? Who is Miss Kelly? Never mind, dear. Which, Charlie? My mother? Good, Charlie. Fine. 
Now I think you and I should make a quick trip upstairs before we say goodbye and are on our way. Good morning, Annie. Good morning, Mrs. Tell Irma I'll have poached eggs this morning, please, Annie. Yes, Mrs. Got my briefcase. What's going on? I have to get this term paper done. In here? Where else? You're going to type? Why not? You're going to sit there banging a typewriter on my family's dining room table? Why not? Because it wasn't designed for it. That's why not. Oh, Howard. Put something under it if you want. Wait, wait, wait. you're not going to use those placemats, are you? I thought I would, yes. Yeah, those are extremely good placemats. Ellie Mother got those in Italy. All right. I'll, uh, use these, then. Mind if I use these? We put pots on them. We can certainly put a typewriter. Yes, Mrs.? I wonder if anything might have happened to my poached eggs, Annie. Irma's cooking two more, Mrs. Two more? The first one slid off the plate while she was buttering the toast. Is she drinking again, Annie? I don't think so, Mrs. I'd better go see. Simple matter of two poached eggs. Honestly, Annie, sometimes I think it's almost better if we just do things ourselves. Yes, Mrs. Don't you have a plane to catch? Well, uh, could you please work someplace else? I'd like to know where, please. And you mean you plan to leave all that stuff there? I thought I would, yes. Mm -hmm. All that crap all over the dining table? It's a term paper, Howard crucial for my degree. Whoa. What if we want to have a few people over, for Christ's sake? We can eat in the kitchen. Oh, Jesus. Everybody does these days. It doesn't make it right. Let me get this done, Howard! Let me get a good grade and my master's degree and a good job so I can be out of here every day. Right. Fine. Hmm? What the hell? Yeah, listen, then why don't I turn it into a tool room every night? Hmm? you tell Mildred to wake me up, Mother? I know it's Saturday, darling, and I apologize, but something has come up, and I want you to make a little decision. What decision? Start your breakfast, dear. No one can think on an empty stomach. Now, guess who telephoned this morning? Who? Your Aunt Martha. Oh, I love her. So do I, but the poor thing hasn't got enough to do, so she was on the telephone at the crack of dawn. What did she want? Well, now, here's the thing. She's got an extra ticket for the theater tonight, and she wants you to join her. Sure. Now, wait till I finish, dear. I told her that it was your decision, of course, but I thought that you had other plans. What other plans? Now, think, sweetheart. Isn't there something rather special going on in your life this evening? Oh, Am I right, or am I right? Dancing school. Not just dancing school, sweetheart. The first session of the junior assembly. I can't work in this place. It's like a tomb. I'd like to go to a play with Aunt Martha. Carolyn, I wonder if you're being just a little impulsive this morning. You don't even know what the play is. What is it, then? Well, it happens to be a very talky play called St. Joan. Oh, we read that in school. I want to go all the more. To some endless play with your maiden aunt? Well, she's my favorite person. Well, then go if it's that important to you. I'll call her right now. Carolyn, you realize that the first junior assembly is like the first day of school. Once you miss, you never catch up. Oh, gosh. You see? You see why we shouldn't make hasty decisions. Maybe I'll skip all the junior assemblies. Oh, Carolyn. Well, I don't like dancing school anyway. Don't be silly. I don't. I've never liked it. I'm bigger than half the boys. I never know what to say. 
I'm a terrible dancer. Last year, I spent half the time in the ladies' room. That's nonsense. It's true, Mother. I hate dancing school. I don't know why I have to go. St. Joan wouldn't go to dancing school in a million years. Yes, and look what happened to St. Joan. I don't care. I've made up my mind. All right. And how do you propose to spend your other Saturday nights? I mean, when there's no Aunt Martha and no St. Joan, and all your friends are having the time of their life at junior assemblies. I'll do something. Well, obviously, you're not old enough to make an intelligent decision. I knew you wouldn't let me decide. All right, then. Decide. I'd like but to go... But let me tell you a very short story before you do about your dear Aunt Martha, who also made a little decision when she was about your age. She decided... If you breathe a word of this, I'll strangle you. She decided she was in love with her riding master. And so she threw everything up and ran off with him to Taos, New Mexico, where father had to track her down and drag her back. But it was too late, Carolyn. She had been overstimulated. And from then on in, she refused to join the workaday world. Now there it is, in a nutshell. So you think about it while I'm ordering the groceries and decide. I've decided, Mother. Good. I hope you come to your senses. I've decided to talk to Aunt Martha. You've got a dentist appointment, Carolyn, and you've got riding lessons at home. No, we'll skip the riding lessons, but Carolyn, Carolyn! Boom! No. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you scared me out of my skin. I wanted to. Your mother said you were sick this morning. I was. I am. So sick you couldn't go to school. I am, Aggie. I up chucked twice. Oh, then you get right straight back to bed. How come you didn't do my room yet? Because I thought you were still sleeping. Just been lying there, Aggie, waiting. Well, I got more to do now since I left. I got the silver and the downstairs lavatory and all the beds besides. My mother said you want to leave us. She said now there's a war, you want to get a job with more money. Is it true, Ag? Baby. Money isn't everything, Aggie. <laughs> Listen to him, no. You can be rich as a king and still be miserable. Look at my Uncle Paul. He's rich as Croesus and he's drinking himself to oblivion. What do you know about all that? I know a lot. I eat dinner here in the dining room now and I listen and I know my Uncle Paul is drinking himself to oblivion and Mrs. Williams has a tipped uterus. Here, now you stop that talk. Well, it's true, Ag, and it proves money isn't everything, so you don't have to leave us. It's not just the money, darling. Then what? Are you still mad at me for peeking at you in the bathtub? It's enough, no. Well, then what is it, Ag? How come you're just leaving? Because I don't... I don't want to do domestic service no more. Why? Because I don't like it no more, Mike. I'll help, Ag. I'll make my bed, I'll pick up my towel, I'll try and be much more careful when I pee. <laughs> Lord love you, lad. I mean it, I will, Ag. I'll tell my parents to give you more time off. I'll tell them to give you all day Sunday. No, darling, no. I'm serious, Ag. No, darling. Okay. Let's measure it out, then. When will you be going, then, Ag? As soon as your mother finds someone else. She can't find anyone, Aggie! Seventeen feet, two and a half inches. So you gotta stay. You can't just leave people in the lurch. Why, look at these French doors. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm also thinking about heat loss. I'll stay till you go away for the summer. You're gonna get married, aren't you? Maybe. To that guy you told me about from church? Maybe. You're gonna have children? You will, I know you will. You'll have a boy of your own. Hold that tight now. Will you come back and see us, Ag? Oh, my yes. You won't, Ag. 
I will, surely. You'll never come back, Ag. I'll never see you again, ever. 25 feet, 5 inches. Come here, Mike. No. Come here and give Aggie a big hug. No, why should I? No. Just a squeeze, for old time's sake. No! Go hug your own kids, Agnes. I got work to do. I got a whole stack of homework to do. I'm missing a whole day of school. Michael! Okay. Here's your dining room, Doctor. There it is. Big room. Light room. Commodious room. That's one of the reasons we bought the house. And one of the reasons you should consider breaking it up. Breaking it up? Bear with me. What say we turn this room into an office for you and a waiting room for your patients? Well, well, well. I thought we planned to open up one of those maids' rooms on the third floor. Hold on. Relax. <laughs> a patient trusts the psychiatrist, doesn't he? Why can't the psychiatrist trust the architect? Now, here is a ground plan of your house. This is what you're stuck with for the moment. And here, with these approximate dimensions, is your dining room. You see? Now, suppose, just suppose, that we were to start with a clean slate. Suppose we open this up here. We slam a beam in there. We break through here and here. We blast this out and we throw that out. Now, what have you got? I'm not quite sure. Well, you don't have a dining room anymore. That's what you don't have. <laughs> well, wait, where, where, um, where do we eat? Here, right here. You see? I'm putting in an eating area. Look at the space, the flow. The wife cooks, the kids set the table, you stack the dishes, all right here. Democracy at work in your own home. Hmm. Now, let's review your day. You come down to breakfast, huh? Everybody's cooking his or her own thing. Eggs, cornflakes, Pop-Tarts, whatever. You eat, relax, say goodbye, and then you come in here to go to work. Do you have a nurse or a receptionist? No. No, I'm just a humble shrink. <laughs> you come in here, into the reception room, and then you go through a, a soundproof door here into your office. You, um, you turn on your stereo console here, and then you settle behind your desk module here. <laughs> you read, listen to music. Pretty soon, buzz, a patient arrives. You turn off the music, set aside your reading, you buzz him in through the soundproof door. He flops on a couch here and tells you his dream. You stare through a, a window there. He leaves, you write him up, more buzzes, more patients, and soon it's time for a good, easy, cooperative supper with the family. Huh. Yeah, but not in the dining room. No, not in the dining room. Yeah, uh... Look, I know whereof I speak. I grew up in a room like this. Oh, yes? Oh, sure. This is home turf for me. Really? Oh, God, yes. My father sat in a chair just like that. Uh-huh. My mother sat there. My sister sat here. I sat right here. <sighs> it all comes back. Do you want to tell me about it? It was torture, that's all. Those endless meals. Waiting to begin waiting for the dessert, waiting to be excused so they couldn't lean on you anymore. I remember one time I came to the table without washing my hands. My father. Go on. Nah, never mind. The point is, it's time to get rid of this room, doctor. But I'll tell you, frankly, I'm not interested in... 
screwing around with any more maids' rooms. I can do that in my sleep. What I want is a chance to get in here so that I can open up your whole ground floor. Now, what do you say? Well, I'll have to think about it. Fine. Take your time. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll send you my bill for the work I've done so far. Fine. And uh, I'll send you mine. everyone to leave the table quiet quietly and go back into the hall and come in again in the right way that's it go out turn around and come in come in as if you were your mummies and daddies coming into a lovely dinner party that's right good very good no 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 winky should go first since it's her birthday and she's the hostess that's right good no no winky you should sit at the head of the table honey that's right no, good. Very very good. no, no 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 billy, billy you should sit over here next to winky it should be boy girl boy girl that's right good very good now what do we do with our napkins? Oh, oh I, I know. Right, like that's right. right. We unfold them and tuck them under our chins. Like this. Like this. And now we can put on our party hats. Yay! Can the boys wear hats in the house? Yes, they can, Brewster, because this is a special occasion. Sometimes, on special occasions, the rules can change. Yay! Yay! I said sometimes, and I meant some of the rules. Here's my daddy. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Bill. What brings you here? Uh, uh, I came to pick up Bill. I thought Judy was picking him up. Well, she asked me to. You're a little early. We haven't even had our cake. Yeah, well, she told me to be early. <laughs> I can't get mine to work. You have to blow in the Help her, Brewster. Little boys are supposed to help little girls. No! <laughs> you help no! Her. Uh, where's, uh, Frank? Playing golf. Where else? Oh, on Winky's birthday. <laughs> Don't get me started, please. Can we have ice cream? Have ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Get it, sweetheart. Be patient. It will give you something to look forward to. Guess Judy must have known that Frank would be out playing golf. Guess Judy knows everything. She knows about us, at least. They want ice cream. Nick says she wants to fight it tooth and nail. Fight what? We haven't done anything. Nick says she wants to nip it in the butt. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. All right, all right, ice children, ice you win. Yay! Now, Roberta is very busy in the kitchen because she also has a dinner party tonight. So, who would like to help bring me? I don't want. I want. I'll go. I'll go. Billy, you can bring out the ice cream and. Sandra, you can bring out the cake. Careful, careful, walk, don't run. And be polite to Roberta because she's working very hard. And Winky and Brewster, you will have other responsibilities. For instance, Brewster, when Billy and Sandra reappear through that door, what will you do? Sing the song. Good, Brewster. Now be very quiet and watch that door. And as soon as they come out, start singing. So what do we do? She says she's thinking of telling her father about us. Her father? Yeah, he'd fire me immediately. What if he did? Well, I'd be out of a job there, Peggy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wingy. Happy birthday to you. Wait, before you blow out the candles, you have to make a wish. And Mummy has to make a wish. See, Mummy is putting her wedding ring around one of the candles. Now we both close our eyes and make a wish. I wish I no, could no, have. No, 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 don't tell. Never tell a wish. If you do, it won't come true. 
All right. Now blow. Uh, yeah, no, no, we <laughs> okay, okay now, Wiki, you cut the cake, please, okay. and give everyone a piece, and the Brewster, you can pass the ice cream. Okay. What did you wish for? <laughs> Won't tell. You think it'll come true? No. Listen, we could leave town. And go where? I don't know, wherever I get another job. Yes. I mean, you'd get Winky, I'd have Billy in the summer, yes. right? At least we'd be free. Oh, Winky, thank you. Yeah, Billy, Bill. Bill, come here for one second, please, okay? Just one second. It's all right. Uh, wait, do you, wait, do you have to go to the bathroom? No. Uh, then don't do that, please. Don't do what? You know what, right? Yes, that's right. All right, now you go back and enjoy the party. It's okay. That's right. I'm sorry, I just... I grew up here. Well, who didn't? Uh, to just pick up steaks. Oh, I know. I mean, this is where I live. Me too. We just have to learn how to behave ourselves then, huh? Oh, Ted. Be good little children? I can't stand it. Everyone's finished, Mommy. Thank you, sweetheart. And here's your ring from the cake. Oh, good for you, darling. I forgot all about it. So, it's time to go then? I've planned some games. You want me to stay? It would help. Then I'll stay. Into the living room now, children, for some games! Yay! What kind of games? Oh, all kinds of games, Brewster. Blind man's bluff and pin the tail on the donkey. Yay! I'll help get them started. <laughs> would you? Well, I propitiate, Roberta. Yeah, I'll be the donkey. Oh, stop. Hmm? Yes. Stop or I'll scream. <laughs> Come on, Mommy! We're waiting! We're coming, sweetheart! Which one are you? I'm Nick Grimp. What do you want? To have lunch with you. Then you're late. I went to the club. Ah. Bring him some lunch, Dora. Yes, sir. Thank you, Grimp. So, you're Nick, eh? Yes, sir, I am. You're the one who wants to go to Europe this summer? No, that's Mary. That's my cousin. You're the one who wants the automobile. Says he can't go to college without an automobile. No, that's my brother, Tony. Well, what do you want? Not, but I... I Everybody I, who sits down with me wants something. Usually it's money. You want money? Yes, sir. For what? My education. Education, eh? That's a good thing. Or can be. Where do you want to be educated? St. Luke's School in Litchfield, Connecticut. I never heard of it. It's an excellent boarding school for boys. Is it Catholic? I don't think so, Graham. Sounds Catholic to me. I think it's High Episcopalian, Graham. Then it's expensive. My parents think it's a first-rate school. Aha! Your parents think. They've discussed all the boarding schools and decided this is the best. They decided, did they? Yes, sir. Uh, and then they decided you should get your grandfather to pay for it. Yes, sir. Uh, another one leaving the nest, Dora. Yes, sir. And taking a piece of the nest egg. Yes, sir. Why don't you stay home? Me? You. Because I want to broaden myself. To what? I want to broaden my horizons. 
My horizons need broadening. I see. And I'll meet interesting new friends. But don't you have interesting friends here? Well, sure, Grant. I do. I have interesting friends right here. I know a man who makes boats in his basement. But I'll I know a man who plays golf with his wife. But I'll meet different types, Grant, from all over the country. New York, California. Oh, why would you want to meet anyone from New York? Well, they're more sophisticated, Grant. They'll buff me up. They'll what? My mother says I need buffing up. Do you think he needs buffing up, Dora? No, sir. No, Dora doesn't think you need buffing up. I don't think you need buffing up. You'll have to give us better reasons. Um, well, they have advanced Latin there. Yes, and? And an indoor hockey rink. I see, and? And beautiful grounds and surroundings. Well, don't we? Don't we have beautiful surroundings? Why do you have to go away to have beautiful surroundings? I don't know, Grandpa. All I know is that everybody's going away these days. Everybody's going away. Did you hear that, Dora? Everybody's going away. Well, an awful lot of people are going away. I never went away. I know, Grandpa. Never even went to Country Day. Went to PS 36 down on Huron Street. Yes, Grandpa. Didn't graduate either. My father died. I had to go to work. Had to support my mother. I know, Grandpa. My father didn't go to school at all. Learned Greek at the plow. You told us, Grandpa. Yes, well, I didn't do too bad without a high Episcopal boarding school and an indoor hockey rink. But you're a self-made man, Grandpa. Oh, is that what I am? And what are you? Don't you want to be self-made? Or do you want other people to make you? Hmm? Well, what you got to say to that? They're all leaving us, Dora. This one wants to go to one of those fancy New England boarding schools. We won't see much of him, Dora. He'll go visiting in New York and Baltimore. He'll drink liquor in the afternoon. He'll get mixed up with women who wear lipstick and trousers and whose only thought is the next dance. And he wants me to pay for it all. Am I right? No, Grim. No, I don't want to go. I never wanted to go. I only want to stay home with all of you. Finish your greens. They're good for your lower intestine. I'll send you to St. Watson. Mary can go to Europe this summer, and Tony can have his automobile, and it's all fine and dandy. Go on, all of you. Enjoy yourselves. Travel, leave home, see the world. It's bound to happen. You want to know who'll be sitting here when you get back? I'll tell you who'll be sitting right here in this chair. Some Irish fella, some Jewish gentleman's gonna be sitting right there at that table saying the same thing to his grandson. And your grandson will be back at the plow. And come to think of it, that won't be a bad thing either. Will it, Dora? No, sir. Well, go on. Bring him his checkbook before he falls asleep. What do you think? Well, you're in trouble. Oh, dear, I knew it. Coming unglued. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> Coming apart at the seams. Do you think it's hopeless? Uh, well, let me check the table. It shakes very badly. I had a few friends over the other night, and every time we tried to cut our chicken, our water glasses started tinkling frantically, and the chairs creaked and groaned. It was like having dinner at Pompeii. Yeah, well, I'll take the joints under here. It's all very sad how things run down and fall apart. I used to tell my husband, my ex-husband, 
We have such lovely old things. We should oil them. We should wax them. We should keep them up. But, of course, I couldn't do everything, and he wouldn't do anything, and now here you are to give us the coup de grace. Oh, boy, look at this. What? Uh, look under here. I don't dare. No, I'm serious. Here, come on, take a look. All right. Here, look, look at this support. Oh, I see. It wiggles like that. Oh, yeah. Now, here, take a look. Wait. Excuse me, please. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> now, here. Look at this pedestal. Now, this needs a new doll. Oh. Yeah, see, I'll have to ream this one out here, put in a new one. You think so? Oh, yeah, sure. In fact, your whole dining room needs to be re-screwed, re-glued, and renewed. What's the matter? I've never been under a table before. <laughs> oh, yeah? It's all just wood under here, isn't it? Yeah, that's all it is. You'd think a dining room table was something special, but it isn't underneath. It's just a couple of big, wide boards. That's right. What's this here? What's what? You'll have to come back under here to see. It's some writing burned into the wood. Where? Right here. Freeman's Furniture, Wilkes-Barre, PA, 1898. Yeah, that's the manufacturer's mark. 1898? Well, that's what it says. That's not so old. Well, not if it's made in 1898. That's not old at all. That's not even antique. It's just American. Yeah. Yeah, well, there are a lot of these around. See, they used to crank them out at the end of the 19th century. Now, aren't I dumb? For years, we've been thinking this is terribly valuable. Well, it is. See, in a sense. It's well made. It's a solid, serviceable copy that's based on the English. Well, I'll be darned. You learn something every day. You know a lot about furniture, don't you? Uh, I'll bet your father was a cabinet maker or something. No, uh, my father was a banker. A banker? <laughs> Listen, I was a stockbroker before I got into this. Yeah, I decided I wanted to see what I was doing, you know, touch it, see some results. Well, took up carpentry. I am amazed. I mean, I know some stockbrokers. <laughs> Is this the support that's bad? Yeah, that's the one. Well, what if you just put a nail in here? Well, not a nail, see, a screw. All right. And couldn't you cram a matchbook or something in here? <laughs> not a matchbook. A wedge, then. A wooden wedge. Yeah, good idea. See? I can do it, too. So, well, uh, will you be taking the table away, or can you fix it here? I can fix it here if you want. That might make more sense. Suppose I helped. <laughs> Never worked that way before. Well, I mean, it isn't an antique. If I make a mistake, it's not the end of the world, is it? Yeah, okay, why not? When could we start? Well, right now, if you want. Then we're a partnership, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we should have a drink to celebrate. Okay. What would you like, something snappy like a martini? No, give you know them up at the stock market. Uh, I want a beer. Fine, if I've got it. I've got the plates, Mrs. Driscoll. You've got your hands full with that turkey. All is safely gathered. Now, Mother, I want you to sit right here next to me. Fred, would you get her her chair? You just squeeze in there, Mother. That a girl. Fred, you sit on Mother's left. Okay. Ben, you sit opposite her where she can see you. And Nancy and Beth hold up that end of the table. And there we are. What's the matter, Mother? I'm not quite sure where I am. You're here, Mother, in your own dining room. This is your dining room table. These are your dining room chairs. Look, here's the china you got on your trip to England, and here's the silver-handled carving knife that Father used to use, remember? Oh, yes. Yes, don't touch it, dear. Cut your fingers. There we go. I, 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 she needs a little bathroom. But who are these people? 
I'm not quite sure who these people are. Mother, it's me, Stuart, your son. Here's Fred and Ben and Nancy and Beth. We're all here. I'll get the turkey. That might help her focus. That's yes. And Mrs. Driscoll, Mother. Mrs. Driscoll is in the kitchen where she's always been. And your grandchildren, all your grandchildren were here. They ate earlier at the children's table. They're out in the yard now playing touch football. You watch them, Mother. Oh, yeah, here yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, Mother, look, look. Here's Nancy with the turkey. Put it down right over there, Nancy. Here, Mother, sit right here. This is fun. Look at that, Mother. Isn't that a beautiful bird? And I'm going to carve it just the way that Father used to do. And give you a little, little piece of the breast and a dab of stuffing just the same as always. Sound good? Just as always. Just as always. <laughs> And Fred, you get the drumstick. Drum drum That's yeah. the way Spoon and Ben ends up with the Pope's oh, nose. Well, 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 I always do. Mrs. Yeah. Driscoll likes yeah. the second choice. Yeah. This is all very nice, but I think I'd like to go home. You are home, Mother. You've lived here 52 years. You're 54. Pass that plate down to Mother, would you, Ben? Thank you very much, but I really do think it's time to go. Uh -oh. Oh, dear. Mother. Would someone drive me home, please? I live at 18 Summer Street with my mother and sisters. What do we do now? Mother, it's not there anymore. We drove down, remember? There's a big building there now. Thank you very much for asking me. Thank you for having me to your house. Mother, I'm Fred. I'm your son. Isn't that nice? Thank you. I've had a perfectly lovely time. Thank you. It's been absolutely lovely. Thank you. Let's sing to her. Yes, we always used to sing to her when she got those orals. Oh, I can't find my gloves. Where would my gloves be? I can't go out without them. Neath the willow tree Sat and piped, I heard him sing Sing of orally I love music. Everyone in our family could play a different instrument. Orally, orally, made of golden hair, sunshine came along with thee, and swallows in the air. That was absolutely lovely. Thank you, Mother. Now I've simply got to go. Would you call my carriage, please? And someone find my hat and gloves. It's very late. And my mother gets very nervous if I'm not home in time for tea. Look, Fred, Ben, we'll drive her down and show her everything. The new office complex where her house was, the entrance to the throughway, the new Howard Johnson's motel. And she'll see that there's nothing there at all. I'll bring the car around. I'll get her coat. Well, I'm coming too. We just have to go through the motions. That's scary. I know it. <laughs> Suddenly I feel so precarious. It could happen to us all. No, but... It's as if we didn't exist. As if we were all just ghosts or something. Even her own sons. She walked right by them. And guess who walked right by us? Yes. You know what I'd like? What? A good stiff drink. <laughs> I'm with you. I bet Mrs. Driscoll could use a drink, too. I'll bet she could. Let's go out and ask her. Mrs. Driscoll? Let's. All right. Let's go have a drink with Mrs. Driscoll and then dig into this turkey and help her with the dishes and then figure out how to get through the rest of the goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> told you, she isn't here. Where is she? She works at a boutique. And my father's away on business. Anyway, come on, I'll show you where they keep the liquor. My mom's always there when I get home. Always. Bummer. Even if she isn't, my grandmother comes in. The liquor's in the pantry. Oh. Hey. Me, no! What? This room? Mm. That's our dining room. 
no. But it's viciously nice. Which do you want? Gin or vodka? You decide. Well, there's more gin, so it's less chance they'll notice. Gin then? But the reason there's more gin is that I put water in it last week. Vodka then? Tell you what. We'll mix in a little of both. Okay. Do you use this room? Oh, sure. Special occasions, huh? Like when the relatives come to visit. Every night. Every night? Oh, at least every night they're both home. Really? Oh, sure. Whenever they're home, my father insists that we all eat in the dining room at 7 o'clock. Here, gin and vodka and fresca. The boys are bringing the pot. Mm. It must be nice eating here. Oh, yeah, sure, you bet. No, we have to lug things out and lug things back. And nobody can begin till everything's cold. And we're supposed to carry on a decent conversation. And everyone has to finish before anyone can get up. And it sucks, if you want to know. It sucks out loud. We eat in the kitchen. Can you watch TV while you eat? We used to. We used to watch the local news and weather. Well, that's something. Well, at least you don't have to talk. But now we can't watch it. My mother read in family circle that TV was bad at meals. So now we turn on the stereo and listen to semi-classical music. My parents said they tried eating in the kitchen when I went away to boarding school. Then when I got kicked out, they moved back in here. It's supposed to give me some sense of stability. You think it does? Hell no. It just makes me nervous. They take the telephone off the hook so no one can call. And my brother gets itchy about his homework. And when my sister had anorexia, she still had to sit in here and watch, for God's sake. You want another? No, thanks. I do. You call the boys and tell them it's all clear. Oh. Sarah? What? When the boys come over, can we have our drinks in here? In the dining room? I mean, wouldn't it be cool sitting around this shiny table with Eddie and Dwayne? Drinking gin and fresca and vodka. No way. Absolutely no way. In here? I'd get all uptight in here. Now, come on, let's call them. Having boys in the dining room. Jesus, Helen, you really are a wimp sometimes. I'm in here, Gordon. I made tea. Tea? Tea. Well, why tea? <laughs> because I like it. I love it. Or would you like a drink? No, thanks. Go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'm over all that. We even have it in the house. I never touch it. No, thanks, Kate. Then have tea. It's very good. It's Earl Grey. I ought to be getting back. Gordon, please. Have tea. All right. Thank you. Tea in the dining room. Where else? Should we huddle guiltily over the kitchen table? No. Then tea in the dining room. What would you like? Lemon or milk? Whatever. Gordon. Uh, milk then, no sugar. Milk it is. Now sit down, for heaven's sake. I thought I heard a car. What, a car on this godforsaken street? Should we rush to the window, cheer, wave flags? Go easy, Kate. Well, I doubt very much that you heard a car. It stopped. The car stopped. All right, Gordon, you heard a car stop. But it's not Ed's car, is it? Because Ed, as you and I well know, is in Amsterdam or Rotterdam or who gives a damn till next Tuesday. Now sit down, please. Let's have tea, for heaven's sake. When can we meet again? I heard a car door slam. That's because cars have doors and people, when they get really frustrated, feel like slamming them. Look, I'm going. I see how it is, a quick tumble with a bored wife of your best friend. Someone's at the door. No. Yes, someone with the key. No, you've got to stay. Mom! Oh, Lord, help us. Mom! Now, you, Mom! you've got to have tea. Mom! 
We're in the dining room, dear. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> How did you get here? I took a cab from the bus station. You look marvelous, taller than ever. Say hello to Uncle Gordon. Hi, Chris. Welcome home. Hi. What's this? Is this what they teach you at Deerfield? Not to shake hands, not to call people by name. Oh, Uncle Gordon. Hi, Chris. But what brings you home, my love? I expected you Saturday. I got honors. Honors? You get out two days early if you get an over 85 average. But then you should have telephoned. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you. <sighs> uh, I, I ought to be going. Nonsense. Have more tea. Chris, would you like tea? Uh, <laughs> I was taking a nap, and Gordon stopped by, and we thought we'd have tea. Have tea, dear. Or a Coke. Have a Coke. Or shall I get you a beer? How about a beer for a big boy who gets honors? No, thanks. But I, I really ought to be going. You won't have more tea. I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, all right, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Chris. Bye. He wanted to talk to me about some stocks. I inherited some stock he thinks I ought to sell, so he stopped by. Where's Dad? Dad is in Europe, darling, as I think I wrote you. He'll be back Tuesday. Oh, Mom. And what does that mean, pray tell? Oh, Mom. I'd like to know, please, what that means. I happen to be having tea, Christopher. It happens to be a very old custom. Your grandmother used to have tea at this very table with this same china every afternoon. All sorts of people would stop by all the time. I'd come home from school and there she'd be having tea. It's a delightful old custom, sweetheart. Where are you going? I asked you a question, please. We don't just walk away. Chris? Chris, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, and I am your mother. And the least you can do. Could we set up in here, Aunt Harriet? I'd like to get you in the late afternoon light. Certainly, Tony. Now, I thought I'd use this Irish linen place mat with matching napkin. This should be washed and ironed by hand every time it's used. And then, of course, the silver, which was given to us as a wedding present by your great-grandmother. You see, three-pronged forks. Pistol-handled knives. Spoon with rat-tail back. This should be polished at least every two weeks. And then, this is Staffordshire. As is the butter plate. All of this is bone. Now, the wine glasses are early stewben. But the goblets and finger bowls are both Waterford. None of this goes in the dishwasher, of course. It's all far too delicate for detergents. Finger bowls? Oh, yes. Our side of the family always used finger bowls between the salad and the dessert. Could you show me how they work? Why, certainly, dear. Now, you see, the maid would take away the salad plate like this, and then she'd Put the finger bowls down in front of us like this. They would be filled approximately halfway with cool water, and there might be a little rose floating in it, or perhaps a sliver of lemon. Now, of course, we would have our napkins in our laps like this, and then we'd dip our fingers into the finger bowls gently, gently, and wiggle them around, and shake them out, and then dab them on our napkins, and then dab our lips, 
and then, of course, the maids would come and take them away, and in would come a nice sherbet or a chocolate mousse. Thank you, Aunt Harriet. That was terrific. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Tony, dear, tell me again what all this is for. I didn't quite understand over the telephone. It's a classroom project for Amherst. Oh, my. A project. In what, pray tell? Anthropology, actually. Anthropology? Heavens, what does that have to do with this? Well, we're studying the eating habits of various vanishing cultures, so my professor suggested that I do a slideshow on us. Us? The wasps of northeastern United States. I see. You can learn a lot about a culture from the way it eats. Such as what? Well, take the finger bowls, for example. Now, there you have an almost neurotic obsession with cleanliness, reflecting the guilt associated with the last stages of capitalism. Or, notice the subtle hint of aggression in these pistol-handled knives. I think I'll ask you to leave, Tony. And Harriet, Out I... right now, before I telephone long distance to your mother. Vanishing culture, my eye. I forbid you to mention my name in the classroom or to show one glimpse of my personal property. And you can tell that professor of yours I've got a good mind to drive up to Amherst with this pistol-handled butter knife on the seat beside me and cut off his anthropological balls. Where are you going now, Betty? All right. I think your mother might like a drink. She's reading to the children. Yeah, that's why she might want one. She wants no <laughs> such thing. Well, then I want one. Now? It's not even five. Oh. Well, let's see what the Red Sox are doing then, shall we? Daddy, stop. So what? Avoiding me? Ever since I arrived, we haven't been able to talk. Good Lord, what do you mean? It seems to me everybody's been talking continuously and simultaneously from the moment you stepped off the plane. Alone, Daddy. I mean alone, and you know I mean alone. Yeah, well... All right, let's talk. Love this room. I've always loved it. Yeah. Always. Well, your mother and I still use it now and then. I've left him, Daddy. Well, now, a little vacation. I've left him permanently. Yeah, well, permanently is a very long word. <laughs> I can't live with him, Dad. We don't get along at all. Oh, well, you may think that now, Meg. Could we live here, Dad? Here? For a few months. <laughs> With three small children? Well, I work out my life. <laughs> John, <laughs> let's see what time it is. Hmm? Ah, I think it's almost permissible for you and I to have a little drink now, Maggie. Can we stay, Dad? Well, make us a drink, Meg. All right. right now, I'd like scotch, sweetheart. Make it reasonably strong. Right. I'd like to use that big glass with the pheasant on it. All right. All right. I saw Mimi Mock the other day. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Dad. And there she was with her third husband being a very good sport, right? Her third, who's deaf as opposed, extremely disagreeable. So I took her aside. All right, can you hear me? I'm listening, Dad. Yeah, I took her aside. I said, now, Mimi, you tell me the truth. Now, if you'd made half as much effort with your first husband as you'd made with these last two, don't you think you'd still be married to him? I, I asked her that point blank. Now, you know what she said? She said, maybe. Huh? That's exactly what she said. Maybe. If she'd made the effort. That's your generation, Dad. No, 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 no. That's every generation. It's not mine. Now, every generation has to make the effort. I won't go back to him, Dad. I want to be here. Mm. Yeah, now, I wanted the glass with the pheasant on it. I think the kids used it. No. Huh? Jeff? So, can we stay, Dad? You give it another try first. He's got someone else now, Dad. She's living there right now. She's moved in. Oh. Well, then you fly back and you kick her out. Oh, Dad. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm serious now, Meg. See, you don't know this, but that's what your mother did. Huh? Now, one time, I became romantically involved with uh, Mrs. Shoemaker. <laughs> now, we took a little 
trip together down to Sea Island, but your mother got wind of it. Now, she came right down. She told Betty Shoemaker to get on the next train, and that's all there was to it. All right, so you do that now. See, you fly back. You tell this woman to go peddle her papers elsewhere. And we'll sit here. We'll uh, watch the children while you do. I've got someone too, Dad. Had a little fling. I've been going with someone. A little fling. I've been living with him. Hmm. And where was your husband? He stayed with his girl. And your children? Oh, they came and went. Sounds a little complicated. It is, Dad. That's why I needed to come home. All right, let's review the bidding, shall we? Now, do you plan to marry this new man? No. Why, you're not in love with him? No, he's already married anyway. Well, he's decided he loves his wife? No. But well, you've decided you don't love him? Yes. Ah, or your husband? Yes. Huh? Now, your husband has fallen in love with someone else. He lives with someone else. Yes, and your children... My grandchildren, they come and go among these various households. Yes, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Well, that yeah. sounds extremely complicated. It is, Dad. It really is. Well, then it seems to me that the first thing you do is you simplify things. That is the first thing. Now, you tell this man you're living with to leave. Huh? You sue your husband for divorce, but you hold on to your house. You see, you keep the children in the present school. There's someone else, Dad. Someone else? Someone else entirely. A third person? Yes. That was that movie that your mother and I like so much, hmm? The Third Man? It's not a man, Dad. Not a man? It's a woman. A woman? I've been involved with a woman, Dad. But it's not working. And I don't know who I am. And I've got to touch base, Daddy. I want to be here. Yeah, I think I'll get a repair. Now, would you like a repair, Meg? Well, I'll take your glass. I'll, I'll get us both the repair. I'm all mixed up, Dad. <laughs> I'm all over the ballpark. I've been seeing a crisis counselor. And I've taken a part-time job, and I've been jogging two miles a day. None of it's working, Dad. I want to come home. I want to take my children to the zoo and the, the park lake and the art gallery and do all those things you and mother used to do with all of us. I want to start over again, Dad. I want to start all over again. Yeah, see, I made one for your mother. And I, uh... I found that glass of the pheasant on it in the trash. Somebody broke it. So, uh, let's have a nice cocktail with your mother, shall we? Let's see if we can get the children to sit quietly while we do. You don't want us here, do you, Dad? Yes, of course we do, sweetheart. A week or ten days, you're most welcome. I can't go back, Daddy. Well, neither can I, sweetheart. Neither can I. I don't know whether to eat or not. What's the matter, Mother? I don't know whether to eat or not. Your father and I were sitting in the living room having a perfectly pleasant cocktail together when all of a sudden that stupid telephone rang and now he's holed up in the bedroom talking away. Who's he talking to? I don't know. I don't even know. I think it's someone from the club. Are we eating or not? I simply don't know. I don't know whether to go ahead or not, Bertha. Mr. Thatcher is still on the telephone. Couldn't we at least start the soup? I don't know. I just don't know. 
Oh, let's wait five more minutes, Bertha. Yes, missus. Honestly, that telephone, I could wring its neck. I've got to go. Go? Go where? Out. You mean you can't even sit down and have some of Bertha's nice celery soup? Something very bad has happened. Bertha, would you mind very much putting the soup back in a saucepan and keeping it on a low flame? We'll call you when we're ready. Yes, missus. Now, what on earth is the matter? Henry was insulted at the club. Insulted? Uncle Henry? Binky Byers made a remark in the steam bath. Oh, no. What did he say, Dad? Yes, what did he say? I believe I was speaking to your mother. Binky made a remark, and apparently several of the newer members laughed. Poor Henry was so upset he had to put on his clothes and leave. He called me from mother's. Oh, no, oh, no. I telephoned the club. I spoke to several people who had been in the steam bath, and they confirmed the incident. I asked to speak to Binky Byers, and he refused to come to the phone. And so I've got to do something about it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Can't you even tell us what he said to Uncle Henry, Dad? I will not. I will not dignify the remark by repeating it. Oh, come on, Dad, we're not babies. Yes, Standish, really. Everybody should know. These are different times. We're not quite ready yet, Bertha. Now, go on, Standish. Be frank. This is a family. Mr. Byers made an unfortunate remark having to do with your Uncle Henry's private life. I'm afraid you'll have to be more specific, dear. Mr. Byers who had obviously been drinking since early afternoon, approached your Uncle Henry in the steam bath and alluded, in very specific terms, to his personal relationships. What personal relationships? His associations in the outside world. I don't get it. Darling. Mr. Byers must have made some unnecessary remarks about your Uncle Henry's bachelor attachments. Oh, you mean Uncle Henry's a fruit? I will not have that word in this house. I he got just... it from school, dear. I don't care if he got it from God. I will not have it in this house. The point is, my brother was insulted at his club. That is the point. But what can you do, dear? Go down there. I'll demand a public apology from Binky in front of the entire grill. But if he won't even come to the telephone... I'll have to fight him. Oh, Standish! I have to. Oh, Daddy! I cannot let the remark stand. Can I come with you, Dad? You may not. I want you home with your mother. Oh, Standish, for heaven's sake! No arguments, please. But Binky Byers is half your age and twice your size. I'm sorry. I imagine I shall be seriously hurt, but I cannot stand idly by. Oh, Daddy, please don't go. The lamb will be overdone, Mrs. And it is a beautiful lamb, Standish. Now, listen to me, all of you. You too, Bertha. There is nothing, nothing I would rather do in this world than sit down at this table with all of you and have some of Bertha's fine celery soup, followed by a leg of lamb with mint sauce and roast potatoes. Am I right about the sauce and the potatoes, Bertha? Yes, sir. There is nothing I would rather do than that. But I have to forego that. My own brother has been insulted at the club, and that means that this family has been insulted. And so if I stayed, if I sat down with all of you now, I would not be able to laugh. I would not be able to converse. I would not be able to correct your grammar, David. I would not be able to enjoy your fine meal, Bertha. I would not even be able to kiss my handsome wife goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Winkins. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, David. So long, Dad. Good luck. Goodbye, Bertha. Goodbye, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Very much indeed. Of course, we can't eat now. David, you and I will drive down to the club and wait for the outcome at the visitor's lounge. Okay, Mother. So get a book. Get a good book. Get Ivanhoe. We could be quite a while. Okay. Mother. What, for heaven's sake? Is it true about Uncle Henry? 
Well, it may be, sweetheart. But you don't say it to him. And you don't say it at the club. And you don't say it within a ten-mile radius of your father. Now, goodbye. We'll talk in here. No one will disturb us. Nobody goes near a dining room anymore. Nowadays, people eat in kitchens or in living rooms, standing around, balancing their plates like jugglers. Soon they'll be eating in bathrooms. Well, why not? Simplify the process considerably. So you want to sit down somewhere, Pop? I'll sit here. We can look out. There's a purple finch comes to the feeder every evening. Brings his young. Now, I want to go over my funeral with you. Oh, oh. Now I want to do it. You're my eldest son. I can't do it with anyone else. Your mother starts to cry. Your brother isn't here. Your sister gets distracted. So concentrate, please, on my funeral. All right, Bob. Now, first of all, here is the obituary for both newspapers. I dictated it to Miss Kovac down at the office, and I've read it over twice, and it's what I want. I mentioned my business career, my civic commitments, and, of course, the family. I even touch on my recreational life. I give my lowest score at golf and the weight of the sailfish I caught off the keys. The newspapers will want to cut both items. Don't you let them. All right, Bob. Now, I want them to print this picture. It was taken when I was elected to chair the symphony drive. I think it'll do. I don't look too young to die, and I'm so old that it won't make any difference. Okay, Pop. I want the service announced at the end of the obituary and to occur three days later. you notice I've underlined the word church. Mr. Fairweather may try and squeeze the service into the chapel. Don't you let him. I've lived in this town all my life and have a great many friends, and I want them all to have a seat and feel comfortable. If you see people milling around the door, I want you to go right up to them, find them a place, even if you have to use folding chairs. We clear on that? Yes, Pop. Now, I've listed the following works to be played by Mrs. Manchester at the organ. All lively, you'll notice. Nothing gloomy, nothing grim. And I want the service to start promptly with a good rousing hymn. And then Fairweather may make some brief... underlined brief remarks about my life and works. Do you plan to get up and speak, by the way? Me? You. Do you plan to say anything? Well, I hadn't thought, Pop. Well, don't if you don't want to. There's nothing more uncomfortable than a reluctant or unwilling speaker. On the other hand, if you, as my eldest son, were to get on your feet and say a few words of farewell... No, no, of course I will, Pop. Good. Then I'll write you in. Brief remarks by my son, Richard. Any idea what you might say? No, Pop. You won't make it sentimental, will you? Brad Hoffmeister's son got up the other day and made some very sentimental remarks about Brad. I didn't like it. I don't think Brad would have liked it. And I won't be sentimental, Pop. Good. On the other hand, you won't make any wise cracks. Oh, Pop. Well, you've got that tendency, Dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Smart guy uh... stuff. Too smart, in my opinion. I mean, if you're going to get into that sort of thing, perhaps you better not say anything no, at I won't all. make any cracks, Pop, I promise. Thank you. Because you love us, don't you? Well, yes, Pop. You love us. You may live a thousand miles away. You may have run off every summer. You may be a terrible letter writer. But you love us all just the same. 
don't you? You love me. Yes, Bob. Oh, yes. Really? Fine. Now, at the graveside, just the family. I want to be buried beside my brothers and below my mother and father. Leave room for your mother to lie beside me. If she marries again, still leave room. She'll come back at the end. Invite people back here after the funeral. Stick close to your mother. She gets nervous at any kind of gathering and makes bad decisions. For example, don't let her serve the good beef eater gin if people simply want to mix it with tonic water. And when they've gone, sit with her. Stay in the house. Don't leave for a few days, please. I promise, Bob. And that's my funeral. I'm leaving you this room, you know. After your mother dies, a table and chairs will go to you. It's the best thing I can leave you by far. Thanks, Bob. Well, now we'll rejoin your mother. I'll put this envelope in the safe deposit box on top of the will and the stock certificates. The key will be in my left-hand bureau drawer. You didn't see the purple finch feeding his young. Yes, I did, Bob. You saw it while I was talking? That's right. Good. I'm glad you saw it. It looks absolutely spectacular. Thank you, Mrs. I think we can dispense with butter balls. Just give everyone a nice square of butter. I'll do butter balls, Mrs. Would you? How nice. Oh, before people arrive, I want to pay you. This is for you and for Velma in the kitchen. It includes your taxi, so you can both just leave right after you've cleaned up. Thank you, Mrs. There's a little extra in yours, Annie. Just a present, because you've been so helpful to the family over the years. Thank you, Mrs. Well, I'd better check the living room. Yes, Mrs. Oh, Annie, I heard some strange news through the grapevine. Mrs. Relman told me you won't be available anymore. No, Mrs. Not even for us, Annie. We've used you more than anyone. I'm retiring, Mrs. We'll be lost without you, Annie. You'll manage, Mrs. But not like this. We'll never match this. Thank you, Mrs. I think I heard the bell. I'll get it, Mrs. Women's coats upstairs and men's in the hall closet. Yes, Mrs. Annie. Thank you, Annie, for everything. You're welcome, Mrs. Lately, I've been having this recurrent dream. We're giving this perfect party. We have our dining room back, and grandmother's silver before it was stolen, and Charlie's mother's royal blue dinner plates before the movers dropped them, and even the finger bowls, if I knew where they were. And I've invited all of our favorite people. I don't mean just our old friends. I mean everyone we've ever known and liked. We'd have the man who fixes our Toyota, and the receptionist in the doctor's office, and the new teller at the bank, and our children would be invited too, and they'd all come back from wherever they are, and we'd have two cocktails, and hot hors d'oeuvres, and a first-rate cook in the kitchen, and two maids to serve, and everyone would get along famously. My husband laughs when I tell him this dream. Do you realize, he says, what a party like that would cost? 
Well, I know. I know all that. But sometimes, I think it might almost be worth it. Are you all set? Oh, come in. Come in. We're all ready. Oh, it's broken. I know. It's funny. I have nothing to do with it. I'm so glad to see you. You all have to find your place cards. Oh, you have to tell us how she did it. She's been playing golf all day. What I don't actually like to do is to talk about something. This is that one that we told you about. We had it in the Loire in France. Oh, this is the one. Yes. And we and we got the label off. We soaked the label off and brought it back to Mr. Simmons at the liquor store. He tracked it down. Oh, I'll well, never know how. It's going to be good. Hope well, that it travels well. We all hope that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And yeah, if it doesn't, we just go downstairs to the cellar and get a little more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think it's going to be okay. Oh, yes. Always so we can go to travel. Thank you for the card, by the way. Oh, have we all got yes. some? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. I raise my glass to all of us. performances, the best in dance, music, and drama, is made possible by a grant from Exxon. Exxon, quality you can count on in the performing arts. Great performances is also made possible by grants from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, this station, and other public television stations.